how do we bring these sustainable systems into the play? India, although our aborigines, generations in the past, known about this technology, we have not engineered these systems. We are calling this as engineered wetlands. Every drop of water that we are sending into the lake can be routed through these constructed wetlands, and by the time this water reaches the lake, it can get treated, nutrients can get fixed, you get to see a biodiversity around the lake. I am Ganges Reddy, CEO of Blue Drop Envira Private Limited. We are a company based out of Hyderabad. We are into wastewater treatment using natural and uh, unconventional technologies. Wastewater has been a tremendous problem for the citizens, for the homeowners, for the governments and also for the societies. A lot of wastewater gets generated out of every household or a colony or an industry or any institute. And most of us have sorted to conventional way of treating uh, wastewater in the last 20 years. Most of the systems that we have set up in the country since 20 years across the country have led us to uh, significant capital costs and also uh, operational maintenance costs. These operational maintenance costs are almost thrice or uh, more than that in a lifespan of uh, 10 to 15 years. So because of this threatening operations and maintenance situation of these wastewater treatment systems, people have kind of either bypassing the systems or not operating them, causing the untreated or semi-treated water letting out into the nalas which finally reach the lakes and end up in uh, polluting the rivers, nalas and everything. So we are here to address this problem bringing a sustainable technology model. We are calling this as engineered wetlands. Engineered wetlands are known across the world in the European countries and in the US for the past four decades. India, although our aborigines, our uh, generations in the past known about this technology but we have not engineered these systems. In the past decade, the awareness has grown so much. The government has also started to look at all alternatives, how do we bring these sustainable systems into the play? While we are solving the water problem, wastewater problem on one side, if it is consuming heavy electricity and we are using chemicals, we are creating an alternative uh, carbon footprint while solving one problem. So the technology that we are talking about, constructed wetland systems or engineered wetland systems, solve this problem completely. They do not take electricity. We don't use, uh, add chemicals here. The water is treated naturally through the plants. These are aquatic plants. They have a different kind of root zone system. Bacteria gets produced naturally attached to the root and as the water passes through this root it gets broken down into nitrogen phosphorus potassium which is uptaken by the plants there is a symbiotic association between the bacteria that gets generated at the roots and the plants that consume this so the water gets treated naturally this whole system is engineered in certain way to reduce the footprint of the system to reduce the capital cost we of course add certain bacteria that go in tandem with these plants by bringing this sustainable and green technology to the households the communities the colonies universities institutions industries we are able to reduce the operating cost they Thereby, they become affordable. When the systems become affordable, people would embrace them easily and it solves the problem of wastewater treatment. Further, the National Green Tribunal has been advocating that not only we treat the water for COD, BOD, TSS parameters, which are commonly known, but we need to treat them for uh, nutrients, the ammonia removal, nitrates. So these are not commonly addressed by the conventional systems, although we are spending enough money on them. So NGT is mandating that these things should be addressed. And these engineered wetlands are the best systems that can handle the nitrates, that can handle the nutrients that the NGT is talking about. People can can adopt these systems, they are maintainable. About the lifespan, the, something that people need to know is these systems are good for 30 to 40 years compared to a conventional system that goes for about 5 to 10 years, even that with a lot of difficulty and maintenance cost. And it doesn't require highly technical people to manage them. You can have a gardener to manage this system. It is very convenient to operate. So we are creating green systems, sustainable systems, economical systems everywhere. Talk about Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad in the south, and then you talk about Mumbai, Delhi, wherever. Most of the lakes today we got have lost their value. They got polluted. How did they get polluted? Our households kept on sending water into these lakes. Now we can't be with these lakes or we can't be without these lakes. If you stop sending sewage into these lakes with inadequate rains, they get dried up. If you send the sewage, now we got sludge ponds. So how do we treat this? Again, deploying conventional systems is not a solution. In the government is breaking their head. How do we solve it? These systems that we are showing there on the TV, you can take a snapshot of it. They address the lake remediation thoroughly. Every drop of water that we are sending into the lake can be routed through these constructed wetlands and 
and by the time this water reaches the lake it can get treated nutrients can get fixed and this can become another sustainable and it goes very well with the lake ecosystem you get to see a biodiversity around the lake the plants the flora fauna the butterflies it's a beautiful thing that can happen around the lake so we are addressing these problems by bringing technology but a green technology which is natural cost effective i am sure the country would benefit significantly our effort is on to take this system to the villages where we cannot even think of mechanized systems and the government is researching we are also setting up a lot of research centers we are partnering with some iits and national institute of hydrology the katoks are on hopefully this system will be available for a broader community that they can embrace at some point of time we hopefully standardize everything in next two years so the systems can really be implemented at a larger scale with a lot of local partnerships with the panchayats and municipal corporations we really uh, invite people who are interested in this uh, environmental uh, threatening situation of the wastewater to look into these green systems adopt them and encourage and do a properly implemented systems improperly inappropriately engineered system will fail and people will call names on the technology so every system has to be designed carefully it has to be managed carefully for a better output and better outcome apart from this wastewater treatment we are talking about that big thing bio blue every toilet that we have at our home or an institution or a college we are using tasky we are using all kinds of chemicals to clean the bathrooms what are we doing with this every chemical that we deploy even though it's not a heavy chemical still is a chemical and it actually starts to consume the oxygen that is there in the water so the water which has the capability to rejuvenate itself now through addition of chemical we are completely killing the natural bacteria out there in the water so we have come up with biological uh, solutions that go in tandem with water water characteristics where the water we clean the bathrooms all the toilets come out wall tiles and floors not with the chemicals but biological products it is as effective as any chemical or more effective there is a lasting freshness urinal smell uric acid smell and all that can be very quickly controlled if all of our cities or villages towns start to use this chemical free compounds to use clean the restrooms imagine the water flowing through all these pipelines may actually start to consume all the deposits in the pipelines and help keep the pipelines clean get the water treated while it flows through our nalas and flows through our pipeline there's another uh, major innovation and we hope these products will be embraced by one and all and we also propose that every campus should go through water audits for a good reason you should know how much water you are consuming where you are spending which department is consuming how much is your kitchen taking more water is your uh, process unit taking more water how are you capturing your rain water just digging some pits and putting some stones is not the rain water harvesting there is a scientific methodology to it of course there are standard methods that are available but they can be more customized for large campuses so we do water audits we make recommendations on water harvest we give a complete life cycle of how do you treat the water and reuse it so this whole thing goes through a water audit which we are advocating to most of these companies and institutions and universities alike so these are the few thoughts that we would like to share you are more than welcome to contact us and we can give you a walk through of what and all can be done with a little effort and little understanding without having to spend a lot of money people are afraid that it will cost money but that money if you take a 10 years life cycle or a 15 year life cycle you are saving money not losing money thank you very much for watching and thank you for the opportunity to share our ideas you can visit our website and always contact us and we are more than willing to educate the colleges young minds about this so we conduct workshops and seminars we'll be very happy to contribute whichever way possible to empower people to walk on the right track if you like this video like comment and share it for more updates subscribe igniting minds channel and press bell button